Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Springfield Township Board of Trustees meeting. It is November 13th, 2018, about uh, 5.35 p.m. Uh, Mr. Burning, could we please have the roll call? Yes, Mr. Burning? Present. Ms. McFarland? Present. Mr. Honolaw? Present. All the trustees are present. Next, would uh, everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The first thing that we have on our agenda this evening is the uh, Star Award Scholarship presented by Arts Connect. And Kim, I believe I'll turn it over to you. You, you have some words. Go ahead and um, call up Dr. Smith and Alicia Ramirez. The Arts Connect um, Star Scholarship is awarded to one student artist in the Arts Connect camp who embodies a spirit of creativity, respect, communication, kindness, teamwork, a fun-loving attitude towards art, trying new experiences, and sharing with others who may be different than themselves. At the conclusion of each session of camp, counselors and the education director makes recommendations as to which child they feel best exemplifies the character traits of the art, that Arts Connect fosters. The scholarship, funded by a generous anonymous donor, is valid for a full tuition of camp the following season that the award is given. This is the second year that Arts Connect has awarded the Star Scholarship. This year, Arts Connect camp staff, staff has unanimously selected Alicia Ramirez as the recipient of the 2019 Star Scholarship. Alicia is nine years old, and she has attended the Arts Connect Kids Camp for the past two summers. Alicia has flourished and grown socially and emotionally in camp over the past two years. Particularly last summer, Alicia exhibited the characteristic traits that exemplifies the Star Award program. She is very creative in her approach to her artwork and imaginative play. She has shown that she respects the views and suggestions from other campers and has learned to communicate her opinions with others in a meaningful and very mature way. She is loyal to her friends and her teammates and has shown the ability to lead a creative group in a project. We are very proud of Alicia and look forward to seeing her and where her creativity and her leadership takes her this summer. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Very good. <clears throat> Next, moving on with our agenda, we have approval of minutes for our regular session on October 9th, 2018, and a regular work session on October 23rd, 2018. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes as drafted? So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Minutes are approved. Next, uh, Mr. Burning, uh, do we have our fiscal officer report? Yes, you may. Um, for the month ending October 31st, 2018, the township expenditures were $1,328,918.96, and receipts were $630,562.73. The ending cash balance of $22,966,825.18 includes obligations for expenditures, payroll, regular operating costs, ongoing capital improvement projects, and investments. I request a motion to approve the receipts, warrants, payroll expenditures, and updated and recurrent revenues and reports for the period ending 10-31-18. Do I have a motion? So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. And I just want everyone to know that the financial reports are available for viewing at the administration offices weekly during regular business hours or on our website 24-7. Thank you, Mr. Arnold. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Burning. 
Next, uh, under departmental action and discussion items, uh, Mr. Gilbert, do we have a township administrator report? I do. Um, as brief it is, but I, I do have a report. Uh, first action item I have is, as the board's aware and we've discussed uh, for some time, we had an amendment to our preferred development agreement with the St. Francis Group for the proposed center point preserve development several months ago. And, and, and as that, those discussions are continuing and we continue to explore possible builders for phases of that development, it's, it's become apparent that the deadline that is established in that agreement of November 30th of this year to have a phase one development plan completed doesn't look like that's going to happen. Uh, we are very close in, in working with a residential home builder and um, I'm hopeful that that will get done here soon so that a, a development plan can be established for that particular phase for the single family portion of the development. And as a result, uh, in, in discussions with the St. Francis Group and, and the home builder, the proposal is to change the deadline to complete phase one, uh, or actually complete the development plan for phase one uh, from November 30th to June 30th of 2019. So we're only talking about extending it for a couple of months? Approximately eight, nine months. Eight yeah. or nine months, yeah. Th that would allow the residential home builder to do their due diligence on the site would allow us to finalize the community reinvestment area, which we'll talk about here in, in a few minutes, and at the same time, provide St. Francis Group the, the time that's needed to get through the zoning process and have a final development plan adopted by the board. So if, if the board is amenable to that, I would uh, request a motion authorizing the township administrator to enter into a, a second amendment to the second preferred developer agreement uh, with St. Francis Group. Do we have a motion? So move. Second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion Aye. carries. I wasn't sure you were going to get a second there for <laughs> I didn't think we were going to get a first. I know. Yeah, <laughs> that, flow on the computer here. That motion, <laughs> that motion makes, makes a lot of sense uh, given the, the facts and particularly since we're uh, getting ready to uh, uh, implement the CRA district. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. It kind of just seems to fall in place, you know, much more succinctly with, yeah. with the additional opportunities that we're having. Yeah, I, I think it, it would be, it wouldn't be wise to prematurely uh, terminate that agreement when we're so close to getting something signed with the residential. Yeah, progress has been made. Yeah, it things happens, are moving sure. along, which is the important thing. Yes, absolutely. Second action item I have, and I would, I'm going to need two separate motions on this one, but as the board is aware, we have been in negotiations and with our uh, Fraternal Order of Police, both for our patrol division and our supervisor division. I'm happy to report that we were able to successfully negotiate an agreement with those two particular bargaining units. And if I'm not mistaken, Chief, they passed those unanimously? That's correct, unanimously. So it just shows that we have a very good working relationship with our, with our, uh, our, our union brethren in, in the police department and uh, that they understand our position. We understood where they were coming from, and obviously we were able to come to a, uh, an agreement. So with that, I would ask for a motion to approve the collective bargaining agreement for the years 2019 through 2021 uh, for the patrol, and then a similar motion for the supervisor unit. Do we have a motion for the patrol? So moved. Second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Do we have a uh, motion for the supervisor. supervisors? So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. I'd just like to thank our chief and uh, Chris and all of the union brothers and sisters who helped work that, make that work and work it in a fair and equitable way. And also it helps to, uh, to keep building relationships between, you know, administration and the union. And, providing additional and always safety for our residents in Springfield Township. Okay, well, I appreciate that. I mean, we, we all realize that we're all in this together and that, you know, our jobs are to, to serve this community and you know, everybody loves to do that in, uh, in, in whatever form it may be. So thank you. I think, I think it's important to note, and Chief can attest to this, 
a lot of communities don't have that relationship with their collective bargaining agreements like we have here between the board and the union and administration and management in the union. Uh, we're, we're blessed here to be able to have those conversations in, in a way that's, uh, I think, productive. And I think this last time we had the agreement done in less than an hour. And in most communities, they can't even fathom that. So I think that's a testament to our ongoing uh, communication with them, uh, the, the, the respect they have both for the board and management that we're not uh, trying to do something that's not in their best interest. And at the same time, I think the residents benefit from that relationship because we have very happy employees out on the street that know they have the, the backing and support of our elected officials and, and their management staff. So I, I think that it's a win-win for everyone involved when you can continue relationships like that with your employees. I agree. Well, well, I think the other thing, too, with the history we've had in negotiating uh, with the union, that they know if they come to us with stuff that's not going to fly, it's not going to fly. And, you know, we've said no plenty of times. And, and so they, they understand we, it's in our best interest that they do well. It's in, in their interest that the township as a whole does well. And that's why we, everybody tries to be reasonable. Right, and we have a, a very simple test within the police department with about everything we do. Is it reasonable and is it the right thing to do? And you know, obviously we uh, are all able to benefit from that. Uh. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, I just, I just wanted to add, I just remember when I started back in 11, the township was struggling and the police and fire both worked with us yes. um, to keep us afloat till things changed a little bit. So, I mean... They know if they work with us, we're gonna, you know, work with them. I just appreciate what they did seven years ago. Exactly. Thank you. Okay. Next on the list, uh, Tom Schneider, uh, director of our community center and Grove Banquet All, has requested that we add an approved caterer to the list, which was Moe's Southwest Grill out of Westchester. Um, I'm assuming Laura, he's, he's already viewed it and has approved it. So I would just entertain a motion to approve and add Moe's Southwest Grill to the approved caterer list. So moved. Second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Moving on to discussion items. It appears as though uh, it is time for our Volunteer Firefighters Dependents Fund Board meeting. And uh, I guess that's going to take place December 11th at 515, just prior to our uh, regular scheduled meeting in December. And I, I believe, is it Mark and Gwen, you are both on that board? Yes, yes okay. we are. Right. As mentioned previously, uh, we are moving closer to establishing our community reinvestment area. We did meet with uh, the Finneytown Local School District and proposed that to them, and, and it appears as though they seemed uh, to look favorably upon our, our proposal, and as a result, we're moving forward with creating the maps and necessary paperwork and uh, attachments <clears throat> and exhibits to uh, our application to create that through the state. Hamilton County Development Company is partnering with us in that, in that as a township, we have to utilize the economic development agent of the county to administer and facilitate any tax incentive or tax abatement programs in the township. Therefore, Hamilton County Development Company, working as the economic development arm of the county, will be helping facilitate that, that process for us. We are right now, Kathleen is working to gather the, the required maps that will be part of our application. And at the same time, Hamilton County Development Company will be creating what's referred to as a housing study to basically identify and, and document that there is a, a need for uh, an incentive to encourage investment in your CRA zone. So as we work through that, my expectation is hopefully at our December meeting or, or maybe before that, we'll have an opportunity to get to the board the actual application show you exactly what, what the CRA zone looks like and what the components of that include and be able to take action on it soon thereafter. So we're, we're getting very close. There's a lot of boxes to check and things to make sure that we have all of our uh, ducks in a row, so to speak, before we apply through the Ohio Department of Development to get that approved. So. You know, I think it's great that we've always maintained a positive relationship and partnership with the Hamilton County Development uh, you know, Department. I, that means a lot. At times we may think, you know, we don't really have that much to do, but when it comes time for us to meet and put together a plan, 
especially a constructive, positive plan for the community, we've got a good relationship and a good start right there. Yeah, and it isn't just because we're forced to by law. That's right. Uh, exactly. <laughs> no, exactly. Uh, I have a very short personnel update tonight, which is I don't have one. <laughs> there was no activity in, in October, so no hiring or resignation, so very short report. <clears throat> And I did skip over, actually I apologize, the zoning text amendment resolution. I was going to uh, ask you. It's because the way the, I don't know, the way I clicked on this, it didn't come up. So I do apologize. I will turn it over to Kathleen at this point to kind of give us a, a high level view of the changes that are being initiated tonight with a resolution that's going to be later on in the agenda. Thank you, Mr. Gilbert. So uh, as the board is aware, um, after the adoption of the township zoning and its resolution, I believe in 2004, we have occasionally added or adjusted the resolution to reflect current trends in the region, uh, in the township, uh, to address issues that may have arisen sort of in a pattern, and also to reflect any um, maybe variances that the Board of Zoning Appeals has approved. You know, after a number of variances have been approved on a certain um, article, you start to question maybe whether or not if we should change the article in the resolution itself. So um, with a lot of help from legal counsel, Ms. Abrams, uh, we have uh, gathered some items that we would like to propose that uh, be amended in the zoning resolution. From a very, very high level, um, we're looking at adding a number of sections, one to address mobile food units in the township or food trucks, one to address suburban chickens, as I'm calling them, or just regular backyard chickens uh, in residential districts. Um, another section to address integrated wall signs or murals. Short-term rentals, like VRBO or Airbnbs. Um, and then the amendment, um, the text amendment also recommends revising sections in regards to accessory structures, um, outside storage, off-street parking, uh, and a few other sort of small administrative uh, amendments like fixing decimal numbers and things like that. So um, there are a number of sections that are addressed in the text amendment. Um, once the board, as you're aware, uh, if you were to approve the amendment to initiate the text amendment, uh, the next step is that this <coughs> provision would go to the Regional Planning Commission for their approval. The Zoning Commission would then also have a public hearing, and then it would come back to the Board of Trustees for your approval at a later date. So this is just the first step in a very complex, multi-step process. And, and as Kathleen indicated, there's a lot of sort of housekeeping things that will be adjusted throughout the, the text of, of the Zoning Code. And, and as the Board's aware, since we adopted our Township Zoning Code back in November of 2004, I think it was, We've had two or three text amendments mm -hmm. since that time, and I think it's pretty customary that you continually review these things on, on a yearly basis to make sure that you're keeping up, one, with trends and things that exist now that didn't even exist at the time we created the code. And then, two, as you start to enforce a code and, and you have development patterns occurring in the township and the needs of, of our community change, so you're constantly adjusting uh, the, the zoning code and, and the land use planning efforts uh, of the township to account for those changes that occur throughout a community over a course of, of time. So this is a, a lot of these things have sort of piled up over the years that we knew we were going to have to address at some point. And it, it's generally better, as Kathleen indicated, it's, it's a very multi-step complex process. So as many things as you can get done in the, one of those processes is better than doing it uh, you know, more than once every few years because it, it, it does take a lot of time and it is uh, fairly lengthy. So I appreciate her time and Ms. Abrams' time getting this together. And as I said in, earlier, there is a resolution later on in the agenda that would initiate this process. It doesn't mean that you're approving the proposed changes. It just simply means that we're initiating uh, the, the process. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Kathleen. You, Kathleen. Thank you, Chris. At this point, I'll turn it over to uh, Kim Flam for uh, Community Events and Programs. I only have one event to report on that's coming up, but it's our biggest of the year, and that is Winterfest, and that is going to be on December the 1st this year. Um, that event um, 
the first year that we had it was last year. A couple of changes um, from last year. We're changing the parade time um, to 3 o'clock in hopes that we can uh, keep people here longer while things are all lit up. Um, and we're also adding a fireworks show. We've also added a um, art craft vendor fair. So our goal is to have um, all of our schools involved in this particular event. And um, we're getting very close to being successful in that through volunteers, um, the schools, each of the school districts um, to participate by decorating a tree, which is going to be auctioned off. Um, we have an entire winter village that is coming in. Two of the uh, cabins are actually already here. We're expecting eight to come in. We have school performances every half hour. We have um, a big submarse pit, a <coughs> ray, petting zoo, mad cat puppet, Cincinnati Civic Orchestra, the Cincinnati Opera. We'll be bringing a mobile opera unit out, doing shows every 15 minutes. Um, it's a very, very big, big event. To kick it off on December the first, I mean, that would go from one to seven p.m. That is so awesome. I mean, that agenda is tight. Yeah. And, and eighty people to yeah. uh, eighty volunteers to run the event. Um, that's not including the support from the police and the service department um, that it takes to actually get this. I was going to say, Mike Wood already looks tired just thinking about it. If it wasn't for the public works department. <laughs> well, it was a lot of fun last year, and I bet, and, and it was well attended, and I'll bet this mm -hmm. year it'll be, be more so. Mm -hmm. Just so sure hope for good weather. Don't say that. That's right. <laughs> One thing you didn't comment on, Kim, was your, your art event that happened over the past weekend that unfortunately I wasn't able to attend, but I heard it was very uh, Yeah, the event was a um, big success. It was a two day art show. We had over 64 um, artists, all local. It's very artsy in its within itself, you know. <laughs> and live artist or live painter that was painting the scene as it was going on. It was uh, it was really fun. It was fun. Excellent. The board has copies of the departmental activity reports. I I would say though that. Um, Mike, I, I know that we're scheduled, we were scheduled this week to do some road paving, but obviously the weather isn't cooperating. Do you have any idea when those, I guess, was it six neighborhoods will be uh, seeing the They're gonna turn it up and run it again when it comes to resurfacing on Friday. Um, the plan is to work Friday all the way through until the holiday um, on Thanksgiving. So wow. hopefully temperatures are gonna cooperate. Um, estimating need probably about four to five days. They're gonna bring two crews in. One will be working on the south side, one working on the north side of the township and uh, fingers crossed we'll get it done so just be patient that's Weather a very robust schedule in Cincinnati it's, yeah we got to give it up to 50 degrees at some point again here soon exactly so you're optimistic that we're going to get up to 50 I, degrees I'm optimistic we just need the temperature to be 40 degrees and rising we need the pavement temperature to be 40 degrees and rising so yeah we'll, we'll get it done I have faith in you. Yes. You must have looked at the farmer's almanac, and is that what it's stating that it's going to be in the 50s or 40s? I'm just an eternal optimist. Let's <laughs> that way. You know what they say is, if you don't like the weather in Cincinnati, stick around, it'll change. That's exactly right. <laughs> yep, for sure. Well, that concludes uh, my report, unless you have another question of the departmental reports. Thank you, Mr. Gilbert. Next, moving on to our resolutions, we have resolution number 97, 2018, which is a resolution to initiate text amendments related to mobile food units, the keeping of suburban chickens, short-term rental establishments, integrated wall signs, and accessory structures, and to make minor changes to various sections throughout the Springfield Township Zoning Resolution. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second it. Mr. Burney. Aye. Ms. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Honolong. Aye. Resolution carries. <clears throat> Next, we have resolution number 98, 2018, establishing assessment for removal of junk motor vehicles pursuant to revised code 
in resolution number 82,012 in certifying the same to the Hamilton County Auditor. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second it. Mr. Burney. Aye. Ms. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Hanala. Aye. Resolution carries. Next, we have resolution number 99, 2018, declaring nuisances pursuant to Ohio Revised Code Section 505.87 at various listed properties within Springfield Township in authorizing stat statutory actions necessary to abate the nuisances. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second it. Mr. Burney. Aye. Ms. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Hanala. Aye. Resolution carries. Next, we have resolution number 100, 2018, which is supplemental appropriation within the general fund. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second it. Mr. Burney. Aye. Ms. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Hanala. Aye. Resolution carries. Next, we have resolution number 101, 2018 declaring motor vehicles located on public or private property in Springfield Township, Hamilton County, Ohio, to be junk motor vehicles pursuant to revised code section 505.173 in ordering the removal of such vehicles pursuant to resolution number 82,012 and revised code section 505.871. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second it. Mr. Burney. Aye. Ms. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Hanala. Aye. Resolution carries. Next, we have resolution number uh, 102, 2018, authorizing the sale by internet auction of vehicles forfeited to Springfield Township pursuant to the Ohio Revised Code, which are no longer needed for public use, are obsolete or unfit for use in the Drug Abuse Reduction Task Force of the Springfield Township Police Department. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second it. Mr. Burning. Aye. Ms. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Hanala. Aye. Resolution carries. Next, um, that's it for the resolutions. Uh, do we have any old business before the board tonight? I have none. I have none. Uh, do we have any new business? Not at this time. I do not. Uh, with that, we'll move to citizens' participation. Is there anyone here this evening that would like to address the board? It appears that there is not. Um, uh, with that, um, well, thank you for coming. And do we have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned. Thank you everyone for coming. Our next regular meeting will be December 11th, 2018.